Welcome to this new video. You know, I, uh, well, my channel has just grown exponentially. I've put on anywhere from 10 to 20 new subscribers in a little under eight months. And so I feel like I need to grow with my channel and that's why I went to Poshmark.com and splurged on this amazing H&M t-shirt, $15. God knows who died in it. And uh, yeah, now I'm looking at it on cam and I'm regretting every part of that decision. All right. So yeah, let's just, let's just get into this. So here is a painting. Well, it's a painting, I, it's an underpainting. I've just started, I'm doing this from imagination. I'm kind of looking at some Bouguereau paintings to kind of bring some Bouguereau-ness into it. And we'll see if that helps, but the drawing is from imagination. It's gonna be an illustration for the book that I will never finish writing or, or, or making paintings for, but it's what keeps me going. And so this is another little character from that, I think. And I totally messed up this eye here when I did the reinforcement and then the underpainting in it. Then I tried to fix it, it looks just awful. It's kind of swimming off to the left, but I'm not to the left. But, but I'm gonna just keep going with it because it is what it is and I'm not, what, what am I gonna do? Like try to impress you all, you know, I'm in a world, we're all in the world with Alex Fedizia. There's no impressing anyone at this point. So it is what it is. I'll just let it swim over there and uh, I'll work on this eye. And uh, you know, I don't know. I wanna talk about some things, some stuff. And I was kind of thinking something, as I knock into everything. I was thinking the thing I could talk about is uh, teaching workshops. Um, you know, I'd like to, you know, I don't know that I'm gonna stick to any kind of chronology here or order as I talk about my experience teaching workshops or my thoughts uh, with workshops, um, but it would be kind of fun for me to take a moment and think about the first workshop I ever taught. And I gotta think about what that would be. I think it was at Crealde, Crealde, Crealde Art Center or Art School Crealde in uh, Winter Park, Florida. Not too far from where I live now. Here's my address. Um, and I grew up in Central Florida. I lived in Connecticut and Rhode Island for years and years, New York City um, as well. In Italy, have you heard? I lived in Italy briefly. Uh, but now I'm back in Florida, very near to where my first workshop took place at Crealde Arts, Arts Center, I think is the name of it. But I was incredibly nervous, again, my first workshop, at least the first I can remember. And you know, you walk in there and I, I was like 21, 22 years old. And these art centers are mostly you know, they mostly consist of adults, so I, I had to be the youngest person there, certainly. And here's the thing that made it even weirder or crazier or more challenging. This, you know, again, Central Florida, and it was right at a time, you could probably figure out when this was based on what I'm about to say. So my facts, my facts could be a little off, okay? But it was right at a time when Disney, uh, either cut or eliminated its animation department, um, or at least a portion of it. Uh, certainly uh, the artists that were doing background painting and traditional media, a bunch of them got fired right at this time. And a number of them ended up in my workshop somehow. I don't know, I don't know how that could have come about. I had no reputation at the time. Nobody knew who I, it wasn't like I was like well known around town. I did some community theater. So maybe they knew me from two weeks with the queen but uh, yeah, I wasn't known at all. I just had this little painting class and somehow these, these artists from Disney, a number of them, ended up in, in, in this workshop, which I was obviously incredibly blown away by and certainly intimidated. Uh, but it basically went well and there was this one guy who was an artist from Disney and I don't remember his name, but he was super friendly. He really made me feel at ease. He was a young, young guy too, but you know, me being 21, 22, everybody was older, but he had to be in his 20s still. And he took me out to lunch and we talked and, talked and 
you know, it was a really positive experience. I think my next actual workshop was after I got done studying in New York and um, I was contacted by a little uh, sort of academy or classical art school in Oklahoma. And they, they asked me if I wanted to teach a workshop and I was like, heck yeah, heck yeah. I was working for minimum wage at the time. I needed, I needed all the help I could get. So I said yes, and I went to this workshop, and uh, it was at the woman who ran the uh, little group. Uh, it was at her house. Her name was Leslie, she's great. I love you, Leslie. I haven't talked to you in years, but you were great. And so I, I would never say anything um, negative about that experience, but it was run out of her house at the time. It, eventually she got a, a place, like a school uh, building, but, uh, you know, it was Oklahoma in the summer, so it was eight gajillion degrees, and she had this um, air conditioning unit in her garage, which was where it was, and there had to be like more than 20, like 30, I, I don't even know, there was like so many people, we had two models in this garage, and then and then all the, all the students, it was so many people, and it was an inferno. <laughs> it was so ungodly hot, and I just remember just like sweat stinging my eyes, trying to teach and uh, and Leslie was so nice and you know she was, I remember being sort of apologetic for the heat and I was like no nah, it's fine and everybody was so nice like one thing I learned about Oklahoma is uh, the sheer fear of imminent death by tornado um, and also that Oklahomians Oklahoma Oklahoma Indians, they're really, 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 really nice. Like the sweetest people and very welcoming. And I uh, loved every minute um, I spent out there, which I did end up spending several years out there. But this particular workshop was a hot box. And so I blocked, I blocked out many of the memories. But I do remember actually this one guy, I hope he doesn't watch it. He was nice. But it was a little surreal. Um, it was my first experience teaching a retired medical doctor. Now, it's strangely common to have students or artists wanting to get good at classical painting that have a background in the medical field. I don't know exactly why, but I've had a disproportionate number of former doctors enter into my classes or my workshops, which I find kind of interesting. You know, they come out of this profession, highly respected, highly revered. In fact, this guy, I think he ran a, like a wing, like an entire wing of the hospital. So talk about like big time. He was a very impressive person. Like when you talk to him in that capacity, you're like, holy crap. And I'm like an idiot. So I'm talking to him, I'm like, I don't, like, in what world should I be talking to you? But you know, somehow I'm teaching this class and he's in there. And so I remember he wanted to like, kind of, I don't know, he wanted to hang out. I mean, he was like in his 60s or something. And I was like, really young. And so he was like, hey, let me, uh, let me show you around Oklahoma tonight. Let me show you the real Oklahoma. The Oklahoma the tourists don't see, you know? And so I was like, okay. And so we started driving, well, I drove to his house. And I had a rental car, by the way. So I had this rental car and I parked it at his house and then he showed me around his house and it was a really nice house. And uh, kind of house you get when you run a wing of a hospital, you know? And so it was really nice. And then um, he was like, let me, let me show you around town. And so we go out and we get in his car, you know, in his car. This was kind of new at the time, you know, because this was years ago. He had like the, the cam where you could see behind behind you uh, where you're backing up. And now I, I, that's like in every car, right? But like at the time, again, I was like, oh, that's really cool, you know? And he starts backing up and I was like, my God, my rental car is full view. It's like just his rear view camera is trained completely on the nose of my rental car. And he's backing up. and. I'm like, well, my God, he's got all these mirrors and he's got this screen here. He's not going to hit it. I mean, he's not going to hit it. And he hit it. 
Oh, he hit it. Like, right into it. Like, he was trying. Trying to hit it. But I don't think he was trying, because he seemed genuinely surprised and shocked by his his uh, mistake. We went out, and he was like, ah, oh, you know, you can't even see it. The dent, which I could see, clearly, with my own eyes, because it was huge. And uh, all the blood drained out of my face, and he spent the next 10 minutes telling me that there's no way in the world anyone would notice it. It wasn't a big deal. But, of course... I was freaked out because I didn't have any money at the time. Again, I was working minimum wage. This workshop was my big break, and here I am. This doctor runs into my car. So we get in his car again. I don't know why. I had no confidence at the time, so I just went along with whatever he said. And we went around Oklahoma. We went down a street, and there were some houses, and he was like, look at those. And then we went to an um, area where there were like these stores and businesses, and he's like, check that out. And I was like, cool. So anyway, that, that went uh, uneventfully. But the workshop was really interesting. I think at that time, I was trying to impart some basic knowledge, things I learned um, as a student. And some of those things include, you know, fairly simple things. And, and, and if you go into a workshop like this and you think like, what can I do in a week that will be actually useful, you know, to these people that are paying like in my mind a lot of money to have this time with you and for me it's just some sometimes it's just basic practices you know some things that'll just make it easier and you can replicate uh, you know on your own and and some of that is lighting the model using the one light blocking out other lights trying to figure out where other shadows double shadows are coming from you know setting up your drawing to where you can sort of see your subject and see your drawing you know in clear view in a way that is easier to kind of see mistakes so that's you know that's a big part of it uh, and, and people can definitely take that uh, with them then I think too you know just that drawing process and demoing that drawing process now it was very hard to demo at this particular workshop because um, I was covered in sweat just this like insane sheen and anyone trying to look at me demo was having difficulty focusing because the glare just bouncing off of my shiny face but yeah you try to just sort of show the basic process and here's the thing and and this is a mistake I don't know if I made this mistake in this workshop but I made this mistake so often early on when I was teaching was that I would I would try to over complicate things to, to just seems smarter than I am, you know, to seem like I, I really deserve to be there. You know, I was very insecure. And so I would make, I would use terms and expressions that maybe didn't commun communicate the idea as clearly as it, I should have. Um, but it was, it was more for my own uh, ego or my uh, lack of uh, confidence um, that I did things like that. And so if, if I have a piece of advice or something that I would recommend avoiding is, don't do that. You're not gonna impress anyone at all. You're probably going to misuse the word, which is a big sign of a narcissist. Uh, so don't do that. Um, try to make it as understandable as possible if, if it is a complicated concept, like trying to explain the way a highlight works on a surface, you know, try to put it in the most common terms humanly possible. Now, there are some people that will come into your workshop and they'll know this stuff. They followed your blog posts, they watched your videos, whatever it is, and they, they're kind of, you, you can see, and, and you get this from talking to them, that they're sort of on the same page, and so you can kind of skip certain things. Other people don't even really have experience mixing paint, and that's fine. You know, I'm kind of going into this eye here. I want to go up to this brow form here, and I want to sort of get some different colors going because I'm doing this from imagination and sort of vaguely referring to other paintings that don't quite match with it, I'm getting more monochromatic and generic. So I want to get a little bit, uh, I want to kind of move to a different area and sort of get a little bit of a different hue pattern going here. And so I'm going to go a little bit more yellow with a little bit more ochre in the mix and see if I can get something kind of going here. I don't, I'm not excited about these results right now, but I'm being patient. I think it's going to get where I want it to go. And I'm kind of going the uh, scenic route here, kind of building up these forms around it. Um, I'm a little bit more uh, likely to do that and cautious when um, I uh, am working uh, at least partially from imagination. 
but I think it's going to be the kind of thing that sort of pulls together or snaps together once there's some accents, once there's some sharper edges in there. The next series of workshops I did was at, uh, and this kind of over, overlapped Oklahoma. I was teaching at GCA in the core program, and uh, so I was doing workshops there. I did a lot of workshops there. In fact, I think before, I think I did a summer workshop there before I started in the core program, maybe. I, it might have been a class that I was doing. I can't really remember. Um, but then I started doing workshops there, and uh, oh my gosh, that, that, those were fun. Um, they were really stressful. I mean, they were the most stressful workshops at GCA because it's a very competitive environment. It was a very competitive environment. Maybe now it's not, maybe now it's super chill. Um, but uh, there was this feeling like, you know, you would have a lot of people that would be from the core program, people that studied full time would be in your workshop. And they were like, you know, oftentimes better than you were. You know, you're trying to do a demo and teach and then there's people in the room that are like just blowing you out of the water. It just sort of, you know, messes with your confidence, but it's a good environment. It's good and, and I'll tell you teaching there and I'll talk about my experience teaching there at some point in the future. Um, teaching in the core program because there's uh, there's lots to say. Uh, but I will say that uh, teaching there makes you a far better artist and teacher because you've got it. When you say something, you can't slide. Like you're going to get a lot of people that push back and are like, is that really true? And you're like, I don't know. I had probably my worst experience teaching a workshop there. You know, I would try to like, everybody wants as much time as they can have with you and you've got to try to figure out how to give them that, give them something useful, but then like extract yourself from the situation and get to the next person. And there is a woman there. I start to pick up on her being really pissed because I, I'm not spending enough time with her. And so I just notice her like, she's like this, right? Like, she's sitting on a bench, you know, she's like, there's some people at easels and there's a bench. That's <laughs> right. And then I, I would come up to her and, and I'd come up to her and she'd be like, <laughs> and like turn her head away from me. And uh, so I could tell she was mad. I'd be like, what's going on? Are you okay? Like, is everything all right? And she'd be like. <laughs> and then finally at some point, I kind of snapped, which is not common for me. I think on like the third day. And I was like, listen, I understand you don't like the workshop or whatever, but I just, you got, you can't be so disrespectful because other people paid money and this is impacting everyone in the room. She was being so open about it. And she was trying to like start like a thing, like a walkout, but everybody else was fine in the workshop except for her. Anyway, 99.9% .9 of experience is positive. You have that one and it's, you know, it's the, it's the lesson in life, I guess. It's just like social media, navigating that space. You scroll past all the positive comments, and then one person's like, that eye looks weird. And you're like, my God, I hate painting. And then you like almost delete your account. So there were a lot of workshops I did at GCA. And uh, most of them I taught while I was a teacher there. And one of them, this was still when it was mid, mid <laughs> Midtown. Um, it was... Uh, it's during the summer, so regular core classes weren't going on. And I was doing this workshop in the one room, and then in the next room, well, there were three ro rooms in a row uh, in, in Midtown Manhattan, and they're huge rooms. And so there was like this middle room, and then a giant cast hall, or there's this first room, a giant cast hall in the middle, and then a, f a figure painting room on the far end. And in that far end room, they were doing a still life painting competition. And this was sort of a semi-annual kind of kind of deal, and the ten best still life artists that applied to be in the competition were in this competition. And uh, there there were some pretty big names in it um, at the time, I guess. I guess it, some of them are still pretty big names. Um, and I so I was teaching in the one room. I was teaching my little portrait painting class. And you know what? I actually just recently found the image of the demo I did in this portrait painting class the week of the still life competition. Here it is. I painted, I did this drawing and then I did this little form painting of an eye, a lot like what I'm painting here. And this is actually the uh, painting I did from this workshop. Um, and so, yeah, like uh, 
during our breaks in my workshop, we could go over and kind of like peek at the still life competition. And then when they took breaks, you could kind of go in and look at what everybody was painting. And, uh, and they worked all week, the exact time frame that my class was going on. So we got to see these still lifes unfold. And uh, so Mike, Michael Klein was there, uh, Mike Klein, and uh, he was painting. And uh, Mike's, Mike's, well, you know, we don't hang out or, you know, it's funny, I always talk about these people and I'm like, oh, they're a friend of mine. We don't stay in touch. And I'm starting to feel like I'm not good at friendships. Uh, but Mike and I go way back and, uh, and uh, so I like Mike a lot. And I think he's a fantastic painter. Uh, specifically, uh, his still lives are amazing. And I like his style. And uh, Justin Wood was there. And uh, Justin was still a student at the time at GC, I think. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, he was there painting. And then the one, the only, Cesar. Santos was there. Anyway, so at the end of the week, they do the judging, you know, and this is overlapping with the end of my workshop. And uh, I don't remember who was the judge. Uh, there were several. I think Tony Sear and I was the judge from Suggested Donation. And, uh, and so, yeah, Mike Klein won first place. And um, I loved his painting. Uh, it was aesthetically amazing and just really well done. And so he won first place. And then uh, Justin won second, I think. And then, uh, and then Cesar won third. They announced the prizes and they, the people were going up and shaking hands. And I went to the bathroom, you know, and it was just me in there. And then Cesar came in. <laughs> he was so mad. Um, I don't know if he hit anything like the, the, the paper towel holder. I thought maybe he did. I feel like there was like violence happening around me. I was trying to pee, you know, and I feel so vulnerable. And there was like a whirlwind of anger around me. And he was like cursing and he was saying how it was a charity case. I was a little rattled. I was trying to uh, zip up and get out of there as quickly as I could. But it was an interesting thing to sort of witness. It was a little bit like he used to make these uh, videos a long time ago where he'd be like in the gym with his shirt off. like. And he'd be like, sort of like yelling and like super amped up and like do like a million jumping jacks or something. And you could see the people in the back were like, what in the crap is this guy doing? But it was that, like it was that energy that he did in these shirtless exercise videos. He's a really, really good, talented painter. No, he's not gonna see this, but I have no issue with him. He's just really, really unhappy that he didn't win. I don't know. Mike's painting was definitely the best. It was definitely the best. I don't even remember Justin's, but Justin's a great painter, so I can only imagine it deserved it. I remember Cesar's having a lot of stuff in it. There's a lot of stuff, well painted. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, a lot of anger. Cesar Santos. And around the same time, I think this overlapped and then went on for years after. This really went on until up till like COVID, when this kind of ended. Another venue I taught workshops in was uh, at Snow College in Ephraim, Utah. And uh, that was just a wonderful experience. And it was great because I will say that I had so many repeat um, students year after year in such a warm, incredible community. It, it was honestly the best workshop environment, workshop experience uh, I think I'd ever had. And at that point, I kind of knew how to do it in a way that was um, effective, I think or most useful to the people going uh, to the workshop. Basically what I explained before, you figure out like, what can you give the people taking the workshop in those five days? How can you break up your time? The only criticism I have there is they overstuffed the classes. I'd have like eight, 20 people, but a lot like Oklahoma, people in Utah are like the nicest people imaginable. Their whole format and way of teaching a workshop, you know, compared to the other ones where it's like, you know, it's. It's, it tends to be sort of your workshop, you know, and uh, the week is a, you know, sort of build as this week, sort of studying with you. And to whatever degree it was like that at Snow College, but it was part of this event they have called Summer Snow, which I highly recommend. Um, really, really, really recommend it. Um, I did it, I did it maybe four times, no, three times, four times, I can't remember. 
Um, and I will tell you this, the organizers, there is a guy, Brad Taggart, um, Adam Larson, and, and the, the two of them, I think, still put it on. They're fantastic. If you are anywhere near uh, Ephraim, Utah, Snow College, and they bring in different instructors all the time, and I, I, I couldn't recommend it more highly in terms of just the experience there. And that seemed, you know, and I got to know the students there, and everybody had a wonderful time always there. And those uh, individuals, Brad and Adam, are awesome. And then there's Scott Allred, who I became friends with. He, I think, I don't know if he runs the painting department or the figure department. I can't remember ex his exact title, but he was sort of peripherally affiliated with Running Snow. But he and I hung out a lot because we both like Star Wars. We're both named Scott. There's like a real, I don't know if you know this about Scott's, but when we see each other, you know, not Scott Peterson. Um, but they would have this whole event, and so there would be like five workshops basically going on. Five or six, maybe. And, you know, you'd have these breakout groups, and every every day, one of the teachers, it must have been five, because every day over the course of the week, one of the teachers would have to do a giant presentation during lunch in their big uh, auditorium room. And uh, I don't know how many it sits. I'm so bad at guessing this. It could have been like 200. It might have been... 4,000, I don't know, it was a big room, and you had to do like a um, slideshow presentation and you know show your artwork and, and kind of talk about your life, and your experience making art, and you know your students that were in your class were in the auditorium, but so were all the people at the whole event. So it was like filled with people, it was really crowded and, uh, and pretty intimidating. I'm going to tell you my most embarrassing workshop story in just a moment, but let me get this. Uh, Iris and so there's this one year. At uh, Snow College. I don't even know why I'm telling you this story. Um, so we were about to break for lunch one day. And it happened to be my day to do the presentation in that big auditorium, right? So I had to go in there and, you know, everyone at the event was gonna pile in, you know, all the seats would be filled, the stairs up to the seats, people would be standing along uh, those uh, stair and be on the sort of wings of the, uh, not stage, but the desk or whatever in front of the big screen that the uh, slideshow is happening. So everybody's there and we're about to go, uh, in for my presentation, we have about like five minutes left uh, in the morning session. And, uh, you know, I drink a lot of coffee. I, uh, I like a good cup of coffee. Um, I can't call it cup of joe. I just can't, I can't, I can't do it. So yeah, the, uh, the dark side of drinking a lot of coffee is frequent urination. It's just a part of, uh, a part of the uh, coffee addict's life. And normally I handle that just fine. I just get up and I go to the bathroom and there's no real problem. Unfortunately, I also battle another form of addiction and that is to my phone. Yes, I know many of us suffer from it. I can't look away, especially social media. So moments before I had to go in and do my presentation, I went to the bathroom and like an idiot, Got out my phone and I decided to scroll through Instagram. And uh, then I finished going to the bathroom. I put my phone in my pocket and I go to zip up. And sure enough, yes, indeed, I peed all over my leg, like completely, all the way down to my shoe. I uh, went over and I scrounged around for some paper towels and tried to blot. It was clear that it would take more than that. So then I tried friction. I tried like vigorously rubbing so that the heat would, would make the water, the urine go away. And obviously that didn't, 
didn't work. And so I, I, I only had one choice. I went to the sink and I turned on the water and I just splashed it like all over myself, like up, up, up high, all the way down the other leg, down like my entire front. I needed it to be so wet that urine couldn't be the explanation. Like a pipe must have burst. He must have fell in, into a manhole. And then I just walked in the room and I gave my presentation and that was that. And I was just wet. Nobody, nobody said anything. And I remained wet for a while and I'm sure I smelled like a toilet for the rest of the afternoon while I critiqued. So anyone out there who was present for this that distinctly recalls the smell of ammonia, that is what happened. Well, you know, I think teaching workshops, I think taking workshops is worthwhile. I think if you're someone taking a workshop, you know, I think it's uh, just important you go in with certain expectations. You know, and I, I think that's generally true. Most most of the artists I work with in workshops go in there knowing what what it is and are realistic about what they can get out of it. Just, but I would mostly pay attention to the process, the order in which that artist does things. Make sure you really take note of that. Try to see, figure out their conceptual framework. You know, a lot of artists will sort of explain it. You know, I would hope. And it's what I, I always try to do. Um, and make sure you come away knowing what they're thinking about, right? I can only assume you're studying with an artist whose work you really love. So really try to understand, are they looking at shapes abstractly? Are they bringing that mode of thought into the painting? Is that why so-and-so's brushwork looks the way it does and they have these beautiful like facets because they're staying sort of interested in the sort of flat, abstract nature of these shapes. Are they like me? Are they really in this form mode where the first thought is, I want it to look 3D? That doesn't mean you're going to always know what to do with your uh, marks after the workshop. Workshops are so short and they're over like that. But you can at least know where my mind was. You can know the order in which I did things. And you can kind of replicate that on your own. Uh, and so I think that getting a basic sense, focusing on what their thought process is, and then uh, remembering and recording their sequence, the order in which they did things, is gives you a uh, really simple thing to kind of follow and continue to build on uh, later on. You know, another thing, uh, some other things I would talk about uh, from the point of view of teaching workshops, if you're somebody who's doing it, apologize a lot. <laughs> if you're running behind, as you're critiquing, just apologize to the point of being annoying. It's less annoying overall than the people in the class thinking that you don't care or that you're just sort of blowing them off. Also, I know this is common sense, don't take long lunches, especially if you're going out with a small group of the students. Don't go out with them for a long time and come in a half hour late. Listen, I've been held hostage before where I couldn't get back because I'm not the one that drove and I was trying to be polite. And so I've been put in that situation where it happens and it doesn't feel good and people don't like it. People don't like it when you do that. And, uh, and so definitely avoid that. Always be on time. <laughs> I know it's such common sense, but you have no idea how often I've witnessed that. Also, don't touch your students ever ever don't ever touch them in any way. It's never okay. This is especially true if you're doing a color workshop and you need to test color. Don't put color swatches on a student's arm. Don't put a little piece of paint on them and then lick it off. Don't do that. I've never done it. I'm aware of that kind of thing happening. Don't do it. It's creepy. It's weird. Don't do it. Don't ever do it. I look over the camera, this shirt is just, what am I wearing? This is like offensive. I'm going to get flagged. This video is going to be like, I have a like a, a advisory warning. <laughs> Seriously, like, why am I wearing this?
the like microphone can't be like the fabric won't support it. All right, hold on. I want this eye to be good. I'm gonna stop talking about workshops. I have said nothing useful. I, I'm an idiot. Let's just paint this eye. The truth is, I haven't been able to make a good video in a while. I've been having to like stop recording all of them because I've just been spewing. I haven't been feeling well, and so my I've been like breaking out in cold sweats, and then um, I also just haven't been able to formulate thoughts. So whatever this video is, I'm going with it. All right, let's put in the pupil. zoom in on the painting itself here. All right, I'm gonna leave this here. I think it's fine. It's a good start. I like the eye, and I think the painting will just be wonderful. Anyway, I don't know what this video was. Thank you for sticking with me this long for what can only amount to a lot of nonsense about workshops. But if you like my channel and you wanna support what I do here and you wanna see better tutorials, check me out at patreon.com slash scottwoodell, or you can go to my website, scottwoodellfineart.com or if nothing else just like this video and subscribe to the channel and in return i promise to never wear this shirt again i'll see you in the next video